bridging the gap from scientific discovery to new scientific innovation and business ideas. In today's video, we are going to go through a decentralized science project, which is the thought child of Brian Armstrong, the CEO of Coinbase. Very interesting. It is called Research Hub. The associated cryptocurrency is RSC or Research Coin. Without further ado, I'm going to go through an article here from 2019. Yes, it is a little old, but it sets the groundwork and kind of establishes the need for a decentralized science platform like what Brian Armstrong here is working on. We struggle with the prioritization of what to work on, the reproductibility of results, the alignment to market incentives, access to funding, and the cost and delays of academic journals. So Research Hub is here to try and fix some of that, if not all of that. In this post, I'll explore some ideas on how to improve scientific research, including how to make it work more like an open source software. So you can see right here, top of funnel is the science. We conduct the science and we find out what the world is kind of made up, made up of, how everything works. From there, you get amplified science, engineering, and then the best of the best results, right? These are, you can think of each layer here as a filter, which removes some of the unnecessary things that we discover in science. And I'm gonna put unnecessary in air quotes because who's to determine that, right? Some of the best scientific discoveries come from things that look like they would have just been pointless research discoveries but at the very end of this funnel we get a business and then a new product that is successful right oftentimes the people doing the science and the people who are doing the business do not correlate at all actually they they are very far removed because of this funnel and so new scientific research doesn't often equate to new businesses as you can see outlined here and i think this is a perfect example as someone with a background in nutrition i always find it funny reading the ingredient list on many products in the store just to find that they're literally the same thing reskinned right that's just how business works if you can market it better you might have a better shot at making some money you don't necessarily need a a brand new idea like people have already done it laid out the groundwork put out a roadmap for how you to make a successful business you just need to like reskin it and make one little part better here are a bunch of drinks sold at whole food they are marketed as improving energy passion and healing but really are just all repackaging the new the same few fda approved ingredients caffeine theanine sugar etc where's a drink with some kind of proprietary molecule or intellectual property in it there just isn't it there just isn't. It's too difficult to get there. So some challenges with research today. Academia exists in a weird, weird alternate reality where money and traditional market incentives don't seem to matter. Tenure, citations, and the opinion of your peers is what leads to grants. So instead, this has become the currency of academia. So essentially, it's like who you know. You need to have an in at a company in order to raise money to do your research and have a shot at actually putting food on your table as a scientist. It doesn't matter what your idea is necessarily. What matters more is who you know, who you can get your idea in front of. This one is very intriguing to me. So in some fields, more than 50% of the experiments are not able to be reproduced. Many papers do not include the underlying data sets. Researchers sometimes have an incentive to hide key details in their paper to stay one step ahead of the competing labs. In addition, negative results are less likely to be published. So if you were to get funding from a company that is expecting some kind of financial return for it and you dedicate all these tens of thousands if not hundreds of thousands of dollars into trying to come up with a new form of caffeine let's just say something that's more readily available that doesn't have a crash you have a cool idea you get the funding but then it turns out that you you uncovered there really is no large gap between the form of caffeine you made and the form of existing caffeine as it pertains to kind of that that fall off that 5 p.m cliff where you just hit the wall and crash. You as a researcher are not going to get funding again from that company if you do not present them with something that is substantial. So either you are not going to publish these negative results or you're going to find, let's say that the 
there was a very, very, very slight improvement with the wall, with crashing, with the new compound that you had developed. You're going to be incentivized to some level to kind of exaggerate that. You can see like it's an, a significant difference versus an insignificant difference. Um, I believe it's like your P-score below 5% means it's a significant difference. But let's say you're right on 5% and it's like, eh, we could push it either way. You might omit certain parts of your research in order to push forward something that allows you to continue to get funding. <clears throat> that makes it so that the next person who's coming to reproduce your results to verify them can't do it, right? There's That's a huge flaw because then your published work might get cited in someone else's reason for why they developed a certain treatment and it just it spirals out of control in that and anything that can't be reproduced in science is effectively useless. Then we have prioritization. We often don't fund or pursue work that would do the most good. While it can be difficult to tell what a line of inquiry will eventually lead to, it would be nice if there was a better feedback mechanism for private industries about the most important challenges they are facing. Many, and then they said many great discoveries happen while looking at something unrelated, right? So we just don't know. That's the whole point of science. It's scientific discovery. We don't know what we don't know. and it, Hopefully, we can get some sort of open interest into uncovering things that we just don't even know we need to be looking at. Research seems to be disconnected from the real world at times, perhaps because scientists don't often capture the financial upside of their work, right? It's the people who funded it who are going to get it. Whoever owns the IP, the intellectual property of the research, is going to be the people who receive the, the most money. And usually, because of how grants are set up, because of how funding is currently set up in the system, the people doing the research don't necessarily get to own the results of the research. It's the people who funded it. Then we have even funding is, is flawed here. It can take a huge amount of time for researchers to apply for grants and receive funding. In fact, I would argue that like more than half of the time when you're conducting science like that at an independent level, you are spending time just applying for grants. You're not actually spending time doing the research. You're trying to find out who's gonna pay you to do the research, right? Because you gotta eat. And even then, you know what, let's, let's listen to Brian Armstrong, okay? If you didn't know, Brian Armstrong went on Lex Friedman's podcast here, and they had an entire section. It's about a five or six minute section on Research Hub. So let's go ahead and listen to that now. A little bit more old school, fascinating effort of Research Hub. Um, so what, what what's that about? The GitHub for open science. Yeah, okay, so basically I've had a chance to try to help a couple other companies get off the ground too, because I, I want to see various efforts out there um, succeed. And um, one of them, I, I've always thought about like, why is scientific research not more like open source software? Or why couldn't it be much faster, right? And there's, you've probably have seen this like in an academic setting, right? But um, there's all kinds of things that feel very antiquated to me about scientific research. Everything from the funding process and grants to how peer review works, to how you submit to journals, all the costs associated with journals, you know, the, the people, you'd think like you'd get paid for this or something and it would then be available to tax all the taxpayers for free. But no, they're like, they're all paywalled. And there's like these big companies that have sort of, in my view, kind of held back um, innovation here. So, and, and the preprint servers like BioArchive and archive.org have really helped this, but those websites are, they look like they're kind of from like 15 years ago or something. Yeah, it's like Craigslist or something. Yeah. So anyway, I one of the things I, once, once Coinbase went public last year, I had a little bit of liquidity and I was like, all right, let me fund a small team. Let's see if we can, if they can like go off and make something better here. So we have a, we have a prototype out there. Uh, it's at researchhub.com. People can check it out. And it's basically, um, it, you know, the first version is kind of like Reddit for science. There's like various hubs, which are like journals. Um, you, but you know, you can publish papers there. You can use an electronic lab notebook to sort of have a modern day paper, which is not just a PDF that's static, but it's a living document. You, ideally in the future, you know, you can get comments and feedback from people on there. You can update it over time. We want people to be able to share the code and the data sets associated with their paper research paper is not just a PDF. And in the future, we want to make it even where like, you know, people can um, get funding for science through the, through that site and even license out um, innovations that they've made. Because the other thing I, I've noticed in life is that there's kind of like, a, there's a bunch of people working on science and there's a bunch of people building companies and they very, very rarely intersect. But when they do, you get the best things like, mm -hmm. like SpaceX and Genentech and even Google and like, even Coinbase was based on a research paper, mm -hmm. the Bitcoin white paper. And so most business people are like creating companies that don't have any scientific innovation. They're just like 
marketing based on, you know, whatever. And then a lot of scientists are making things which never actually benefit humanity because they're not commercialized and turned into products. And so if we can somehow create a translation layer between those two groups and help them, you know, help align the market forces, um, align scientific research to market forces so that they're more incentivized. Like if you, if you discover CRISPR or something like that, like you should be a billionaire, you know, and like all the downstream implications of that, not going through some antiquated tech transfer office or whatever. And if you, and if you're an entrepreneur, you should be looking to commercialize the latest scientific innovations. And so that's kind of like the long-term vision for that site. Um, I think it's just an early step today, but we've got like a really passionate community on there that are jumping into like, you know, computer science or longevity or um, various uh, bio hubs or whatever, and like beginning to source the best innovations, but also discuss them, improve them and publish through the site. So uh, I have a question about incentives, but first let me say for people listening who are outside of academia might not be familiar with an absurd situation. So there's journals, like you mentioned, and scientists publishing those journals and the journals provide very little value except matching you with reviewers that are unpaid. Mm -hmm. And so uh, in the digital world, they're providing basically almost no value except hosting your paper. And they put up a paywall and charge people to access that. And that charge is not like even Netflix fees. You're talking about a lot of money. Mm -hmm. So they're basically blocking your research that should be wide open uh, from the world and creating a paywall. It's, it's a fascinating- Let's expand on that. Cause I don't think that even he explained how insanely absurd it is. I did some digging because I can, because I am that investor from Wednesday, <laughs> November 15th, literally from the day that I am recording this video here, okay? And they put out here talking about academic, academic publishing industry's profits. It has a large financial turnover. Its worldwide sales amount to more than $19 billion, which positions it between the music industry and the film industry. So really conceptualize that for a second, okay? This, this industry that they are attempting to disrupt here with Research Hub is... Uh, tens of billions of dollars. It is comparable to the music and film industry. The market is largely dominated by five large publishing houses. And I don't know that I'm going to be able to pronounce these, so I'm not going to embarrass myself here, but you can see them all listed out right there. Um, the largest being El Sevier. I guess I'm going to attempt anyways. Black and Wiley, Taylor and Francis, Springer Nature, and Sage, which control more than 50% of the market between them. The largest, which is approximately 16% of the total market and more than 3,000 academic journals, is Elsev Elsevier. As an industry, these publishing houses are unique in terms of their profitability, generating large net profits. They El why do they why did the number one have to be the most difficult for my brain to pronounce? El Sevier has a profit margin approaching 40%, which is higher than the companies such as Microsoft, Google, Coca-Cola, and Curve is pointing upwards because it's becoming more and more profitable as they continue to get a larger monopoly. These huge profits are not align are not altogether surprising. The research can be illustrated by a comparison of the traditional newspaper whose profits tend to be between 15, 10 to 15% range. A newspaper incurs wage costs for journalists, editors, and graphic artists, as well as expensing expenses for research, fact-checking, printing, and distributions. All of this must be paid for through sales and advertising. Academic journals have cleverly managed to turn the situation on the head. The production of content is paid for by research funds. Both the salaries of the researchers and the substantial costs involved in undertaking the research my own experience is that most academic editors work for merely symbolic pay and that quality control and fact checking are done through the peer review, which is unpaid voluntary work. Because nearly all access is digital, even printing no longer needs to represent a cost. As a result, the only real cost is incurred by the graphic design of the article. The government funds all stages of research production 
but then must pay again to have access to the researched results. And just remember, okay, a little friendly reminder that the government's money money is actually just your money. They're just spending it on things. So they're funding the research and then paying to have access to it, which is a broken model. A single article cost can go anywhere from 30 to $50. Norwegian public institutions pay approximately 330 million NOK, which is comes out to about 30 million dollars USD for subscriptions, and the figure for Europe as a whole has been estimated at 420 million euros. That is absolutely mind-blowing. That is a huge paywall, and it's pure profit because these people who are publishing it don't have to fund anything. It's all being funded by the research done. So Research Hub came in and is attempting to disrupt this. And I honestly think they're doing a good job. We can talk about their coin for a little bit here. It's still, it's still very early days. You can see explicitly the, the circulating market cap for this project is $4.4 million. And that is after it skyrocketed 300% this month. For, at one point, it went up 1,000% over like four or five days. So very small, very volatile. Only 7.6% of the supply is in circulation. And that's because, again, it's still so early. They're using a lot of the coins to kind of fund initiatives, fund some of the peer reviewing process on the papers that are published on their website. I wanna show you guys something really cool here. I joined their Discord to try and get an inside view on everything. And you can actually see that they are handing out coins to people once they can f complete certain assignments. They have an entire page dedicated to bounties. So somebody can post in here, specifically Dwork will post in here whenever there's a bounty on the website, and then you can come apply or claim. For, the, for example, this has a reward of 10,000 RSC. So these are not inconsequence, inconsequential bounties. These are actually worth hundreds of dollars at today's valuation. If you come over directly to their website, you go to the homepage, you can scroll through different publications from literally just two or three days ago. Everyone is constantly active on here. It, just like Brian Armstrong said, it is Reddit for scientific research. And you'll see right here that there is a tab, 1,000 RSC. C research coin or $57 at the current valuation if somebody is going to come in here and answer this bounty for the person who's posting it. I'm looking for someone from the third sector and or with knowledge of a network state theory and Web3 technologies to review the paper and feedback their thoughts. Very simple, very easy. Look at that. They're going to pay you $57. I even just saw one if my computer will load and I can get off of this page. I even just saw one for 9,000 right below it, which is $517 if you can come do a peer review breakdown of this article. So it is fully functioning and there is activity on the page. It's very exciting to see what's going on. There's still a lot of things that need to come from this and I believe I will do a full breakdown of um, research coin and their tokenomics and kind of a price prediction in a future video. This one, I just wanted to establish the necessity for it, establish what's kind of going on behind the scenes. I'm sure it's been long enough, but if you appreciate this type of content, hit that like button, subscribe, leave a comment down below. Did you actually get in research coin at a reasonable price? Have you even ever heard of this thing before? And let me know, your time is your most valuable asset. Hopefully this is worth investing it into. I will see you guys in another video.